In the year 2318, mankind has united together to end war and poverty. It's a time of peace and prosperity for the human race. During this time of peace, alien beings have made contact to invite the human race to join the symbiotry of peaceful beings. It's during this time of peace that mankind makes its greatest technological discovery. A discovery that has the power to undermine all that has been accomplished. Time travel. The world government, afraid of the destructive potential of this new technology, seizes the time machine prototype nicknamed Pegasus and forms the Temporal Security Agency to protect time. So, welcome to the future, as it was imagined by Presto Studios when they released The Journeyman Project Pegasus Prime. It's an adventure game released by Bandai in 1997. You play as Temporal Security Agent number 5, Gage Blackwood. The man who is tasked with protecting the timeline after a temporal shockwave threatens to rewrite all of history. Also a man can get an instant haircut and seems to enjoy reading electronic spinning newspapers while on the camp. Your character also seems to be constantly late for work, so the screening process for secret agency employment isn't what it was presumably. Good morning Agent 5. I sincerely hope the reason you're not answering your phone is because you're already on the way to TSA. You've already been late to work twice this week. I need you here on time for a change. To relieve Agent 3 for the alien procession. Don't disappoint me. Eventually you do make it into work and uh, that's when the problems start. The computers detect a temporal rift heading towards the current day and you are transported back to the year 200 million BC. Your goal here is to recover mankind's historical record, which has been stored back in the past for safekeeping, and to stop it from being affected by the timeline changes. This level starts to get a bit Doug McClure, in that you've got some prehistoric dangers to avoid. So falling off cliffs would be one. Things like this, for example. and try not to get eaten by this guy. On your return to the TSA, you analyse the Journeyman disc and you identify three different world events that have been altered. And this is where the game really starts. So, in the first zone, you are sent back to the year 2112 to the NORAD underwater base. NORAD Zone, it's got a very dark, claustrophobic feel to it, and you really do get the sense that you're trespassing into a military installation. I found this was the most tense level to play. Throughout all the zones, you need to avoid any contact with people whatsoever. If you do bump into somebody or interact with anybody, it's basically game over. In the NORAD Zone, no danger of that, everyone's been put to sleep with knockout gas. Your goal in this level is to disable a nuclear warhead launch. The second zone is the Mars colony in the year 2185. It's a very futuristic feel to it. It's very light and airy, at least this section is. You've got two goals in this zone. Firstly, 
stop the colony from being destroyed, and secondly, stop an alien shuttle from being destroyed. So, now that mankind has colonised Mars, what amazing new things will these brave pioneers be getting up to? What fantastic feats await them? Ah. Alright. Whatever you do, don't get caught. What are you supposed to be? Get him! You get him! You get him! No, he's, you, you get him! Oh yeah, they'll stare at you. As for the Martian mining tunnels, well, this has a totally different feel to the rest of the level. Very dark, very dingy. Almost um, a total recall feel to it. The last zone I want to look at is the Symposium for Deliberating the Aliens' Offer of Peaceful Coexistence, and that's set in Australia in the year 2310. Easily the most chilled out zone of them all. One of the most fun parts about this zone is exploring the laboratories. But, that's not why we're here. We're actually here to stop an assassination. Alright, let's talk about the bad guys. Now in each of the zones you're going to have to face an evil killer robot. And these things are just absolutely cool. I mean, look at this thing. Overall, I enjoyed playing through this game. The artwork is absolutely gorgeous. The controls, uh, a little bit of a gripe there. The movement is controlled by the arrow keys on the keyboard, fine. And interacting with objects, well that's done via the disembodied hand and that's controlled by the mouse. They're a little clunky, but you do get used to them. The puzzles are a challenge without being ridiculous, so you're not going to get bored or go reaching for a walkthrough straight away. In fact, I would say use a walkthrough as a last resort, because if you follow on blindly you're going to miss a lot of the detail of this game and it is going to spoil the experience. Having said that, don't sit for two weeks on one puzzle getting frustrated. If you need to look something specific up, then do that. Game progression is very smooth and all the puzzles are very logical. The acting can range from really solid. Nice outfit. Security! To. No! Dr. Sinclair! Intentionally Aren't goofy. you speaking at the conference right now? Wait a minute, if you were speaking at the conference, you wouldn't be here! <laughs> Sometimes I just think too much. Goodbye, Dr. Sinclair, and don't eat anything toxic now. Thank you. Have a wonderful conference. And thank you too, futuristic electronic Zuckerberg guy. Overall, I really recommend this game. It was fun to play through. I worked my way through it in... 
See, it was a week of evenings and a long weekend, and I was actively looking forward to playing it every day. It does, however, have one big drawback for me, and that's the logic puzzles. Yeah, I've never been very good at these things, and while you can set the game to an easier level to bypass these altogether, they still annoy me. I may have cheated on a couple of these by downloading solutions, but so what? Overall, this is a fun game to play. I think it's aged pretty well. It's available on GOG and Steam for a very reasonable price. Ah, why not give it a go? Thank you very much for taking the time to watch.